Welcome to Cyber Dialogues, brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. In this series, we examine the latest trends in enterprise cyber risk and discuss strategies for how you can help your organization rise to meet the cybersecurity challenge. My name is Brad Howarth. On today's show, I'll be talking to Philippa Cogswell, Vice President and Managing Partner for Unit 42, Asia Pacific and Japan, about how her group is helping clients stay ahead of the latest cybersecurity threats. Philippa, welcome to the program. Thank you, Brad. It's great to be here. So, Philippa, what does Unit 42 do? Unit 42 effectively is our threat intelligence, security consulting, including incident response and managed detection and threat hunting part of Palo Alto Networks. It's existed for over a decade um, and our teams analyze a vast range of sources. So those sources include sort of our telemetry of, you know, hundreds of thousands of firewalls, endpoints and cloud environments. Uh, it includes our malware reverse engineering teams, um, visibility from our attack surface management tooling, which is effectively scanning the internet on a daily basis, looking for all those, those sorts of connected devices and exposed systems. Uh, it also includes a managed detection and threat hunting. So that's our teams deployed into you know, hundreds of customers globally and looking at those environments 24-7. We've got threat intelligence coming from things like our deep and dark web monitoring services that we provide. So looking for things like stolen information, uh, compromised credentials, sensitive information, those sorts of things which are being sort of uh, shared or sold by cyber criminals on the deep and dark web. Um, and of course, you know, we do run over a thousand of incident response cases per year. So what we get there is really sort of an inside perspective, if you will, um, rather than sort of that external threat perspective to about what are they actually doing when they're inside a network. So we're investigating and responding to those attacks. Um, we've worked on some of the largest known cases in the world. We effectively bring in specialists who can quickly and accurately identify what's happened, help contain those threat actors, um, and, and work to the sort of doing logical steps, if you will do, to kick them out of the environments that they've uh, compromised. Why is it so important to do that level of research into what's happening in the cyber threat landscape? In my team, from a uh, proactive security consulting perspective, knowing this threat intelligence and what threat actors are doing is it's it's highly relevant in sort of, you know, understanding the security weaknesses in environment, but also what are those controls recommendations that we should actually be making. We need to make sure that we're providing recommendations that are actionable and are going to have genuine impact, right? So, um, and then the flip side of that is also, you know, using this knowledge when we're responding to an incident, you know, we're incredibly successful when we're able to, you know, get in there and know what a threat actor is going to do next. I, you know, one of my teams was just recently deployed to a, a very large ransomware case in this region and, you know, the company executives, you know, all they had to say was they were really blown away by how much my team was able to, you know, advise really accurately at each stage what the threat actors were going to do next, right? So this allowed them to be effectively speed up um, and be more proactive in their investigation. Um, you know, let's be honest, these these incident responses, they're tense to be in, right, when an organisation is effectively crippled by threat actors and you don't know what's going on next and you have to rely potentially on third parties. So, so knowing what you're doing, knowing what you're up against, is, it's just critical. So how do you use that knowledge to help clients? If we know what's happening in the US today against a specific industry, you know, these tactics could technically be deployed the following day to another industry in another geography. So we kind of having that broad perspective and that broad understanding is really, really critical in what we do. And when we're thinking about our defences and what we're going to do, you know, there's, there's typically no definitive one size fits all when it comes to, you know, threat groups we see today. The reality is nation states themselves may leverage contractors um, to achieve their objectives. And equally, we've got cyber crime groups that are, you know, they're splintering, they're reforming, they're merging. You know, we need to have a, a, a broad view as well as a targeted view as to, for threat actors. So what would you say then would be some of the key cyber threat trends that you've seen through your research? I would suggest there's probably three common themes that stand out for me over the, the last year, and they're effectively around speed, scale, and sophistication. So, you know, if, if we look at speed, you know, if we go back to 2021, we were seeing the median time between when an organisation was compromised and when data was exfiltrated, it was around nine days. Fast forward to 2023 last year, and we saw that this fell to two days. So we're already seeing a marked increase in the speed. We also found that the time from the compromise of an organisation to the exfiltration 
for 45% of the cases that we respond to was happening in less than one day. One customer that I know that we investigated recently, it was 2.5 terabytes of data stolen from that organization in the first 14 hours that they were compromised. I touched on scale as well. In nearly 40% of the IR cases that we looked at last year, we saw a significant shift from that traditional, I guess, phishing or credential theft being used um, as the number one attack vector into, you know, exploitation of internet facing vulnerabilities um, as, as sort of that initial access point. So how are the cyber criminals changing their tactics? You know, we've seen a, a wide range of tactics and that I would consider either, you know, sophisticated or innovative. The threat actors are operating in ways that they are far more organised than we've probably seen. They're really understanding the IT environments of organisations, um, cloud and security tools that they're actually coming up against as well. We've seen nation states um, embedding, st trying to embed staff into organisations, you know, getting them into the, the likes of high tech firms. And, and that's probably something that's more realistic now with the, uh, with the amount of remote workforce that we have than it might have been previously. I myself have investigated incidents where software developers were sort of the explicit longer term targets within organisations by the threat actor groups, right? We've published articles on state sponsored groups compromising large portions of allied governments as well and government agencies. I'm using really clever tactics like, you know, masquerading as cloud backup servers, turning on and off ports on their command and control servers to avoid detection mechanisms um, and from internet scanners and also from researchers. We've seen ransomware groups deploying their own virtualized infrastructure. Um, and, and of course, commonly, we still are seeing, you know, living off the land techniques, right? So using tools that organizations already have in place to, to move laterally, to collect information, to compress and exfiltrate um, the information that we're actually looking to uh, pull out. I and mean, we're also seeing them eavesdropping on security teams in an incident response. So they're actively monitoring those security teams and so they know what they're going to do next and they can change their tactics to adopt to it. So, you know, like I said, there's um, there's definitely a level of sophistication that comes with groups like that when you're, when you're actively working against them. Now, we know that AI is one of the key topics for many of our viewers. How is that impacting the threat landscape? Um, look, I, I think the reality is we know that no technology has probably ever been adopted as fast as AI, right, particularly Gen AI. Um, so I think we're only going to see AI actually increase attacks. I think the good news is, though, from what we're seeing, um, we believe that many of the conventional um, cybersecurity approaches to defence, uh, you know, they're really relevant in the present AI era. So how are the criminals using AI? Um, we know that it's a given that adversaries will use Gen AI to accelerate some of their grunt work, right, um, for their attacks. But, you know, from what we've seen, the evidence that we've seen in, in both our monitoring but also our incident response cases and investigations, you know, they seem to suggest that Gen AI's, Gen AI has probably been used for, you know, activities such as um, exploiting software and API vulnerabilities, um, helping to write malware, um, victim reconnaissance and the like, um, you know, particularly that selection and targeting of victims as well. Um, and of course, creating more um, elaborate phishing campaigns. I, I think we know with, you know, the ability to use AI to structure, you know, writing and, and, and the formatting of emails, we're definitely going to see more of that. Um, and, and in fact, you know, with the emergence, more recent emergence of deep fakes being used in scams as well. For those organisations that are using AI today, what are some of the factors they need to be thinking about? We're going to definitely see the emergence of an introduction of a, a new and a greater expanded, you know, attack surface ultimately when you think about it. You know, many organisations are still struggling to apply governance and adopt these technologies. There is huge potential for greater data exposure through that. Um, you know, there's concerns around focusing on unsanctioned models. Um, you know, there's conversations around prompt injection and what that means. Um DOS or denial of service against AI models as well, um, the misconfiguration of these, um, and even, you know, the challenges that it might create around, you know, biases or data integrity or some of the decision making that organisations are using the outcomes from these you know, models um, in, in sort of relying on for their organisations, right? I think the reality is as business processes and technology become more reliant on Gen AI, it's no doubt that adversaries will also come to focus on the value that they're going to drive from going after these things as well. So when it comes to the impact of AI on cybersecurity, what are some of the key things you've learned so far? 
Um, so we've been asking, you know, starting by asking a, a Gen AI engine to create sample code from, you know, for those common techniques that threat actors are going to use. Um, we've described what a relatively basic uh, piece of malware might look like um, to the AI engine and asked it to impersonate it. And we've also provided it with some of our own research, right, which describes the malware's functionality and also, you know, what the interface might look like in detail. Um, what we found ultimately, which was interesting, was that the code, it wasn't particularly robust, right? And, and what I mean by that is it, it, at this stage, we found that it was only able to perform a single task. Um, it might have created uh, hallucinins or therefore, you know, it, it effectively it failed to actually operate and work. Um, we also assess some of the jailbreaking techniques. And by jailbreaking, I essentially just mean sort of bypassing the model's built-in safety restrictions and guardrails. So, but once the once the engine realized the requests were malicious in nature, it was difficult to achieve our objectives. So we're going to continue to sort of publish these learnings as part of our research and we, as we continue to grow, but also, of course, embed these into our products as well. Philippa Cogswell, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Great to join you today. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Join us again on Cyber Dialogues, brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, as we continue to explore the ever-changing landscape of cybersecurity across Asia-Pacific and Japan.